Throughout our years in RC, we've concluded that bigger and lighter airplanes just fly better. This is clearly demonstrated in what we've decided to build. Let's dive right into it, our largest and dumbest RC projects yet. First up, the giant pink panther. All the money goes to the builders if it flies more than two laps in the pattern. Ben and Misha built this when they were 14 years old. They took inspiration from a friend's full-scale Zenith 701 that they were helping build at the time. Although if you struggle to see the resemblance, we really wouldn't blame you. They built it out of pink construction foam, some old Futaba servos from Brian's van, and an unnamed rusty motor. Oh, and of course, duct tape struts. Although the build wasn't documented, they built this masterpiece in less than two weeks. The first attempt at flight flopped and broke part of the elevator. But, you know, that's all right. They grabbed some glue and were ready for the next flight. The second flight went a little bit better, but it was clear that this plane was underpowered and wasn't going to get out of ground effect. So I decided to land it before I ran off field. Seeing the dollar bills on the plane that bet that it wouldn't fly motivated us to prove that it could. Brian also refused to see the project scrap without a real flight and decided to donate a motor to the cause that produced 20 pounds of thrust. Should be more than enough. Oh. Zach, the button doesn't work, dude. You gotta push with yeah, your finger. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I glued the button shut. <laughs> oh my god! Why? <laughs> I had an accident. Ben and Misha slapped the motor on for the following weekend, and I called my buddy Daniel of RC Test Here's Flight to the game. field to witness this historic event. So, shout out to Daniel for letting us use all this footage from this day. For the first flight, Ben wanted to try taking it off from his longboard, but you can probably guess how that went. With spirits still high, the boys tried to hand launch this time, and the giant pink smurf turd took flight. I was enjoying the plane so much, I forgot to set a timer for the battery, and unfortunately, it began to die mid-flight. We have a possible emergency! The second I realized we were losing power, I pointed it toward the field and barely cleared the grass. Hail runs were <laughs> enough. <laughs> Uh, elevators were enough, rudder was nil. I had no rudder, so we need some more service area back there. While this plane closely resembled a shaved rat, it served its purpose, which was to prove that you can really get anything that you slap together to fly, even something that older guys at our field swore would never fly regardless of the motor on the front. The boys didn't pre-measure anything before building it, and didn't really go into this with a plan at all, and yet with a few minor adjustments, they made a plane that flew amazing. With enough thrust and a correct CG, just about anything can fly. Fast forward in two years, Brian came up with the inspiration for our next build and challenged us to make an airplane that could carry a watermelon and drop it. If we succeeded, he'd pay for the building costs. Daniel seemed to love the Pink Panther project, and we clearly needed a good, experienced builder on the team, so we invited him to help. We called this one the huge four-motor foam cargo plane. In other words, it never had an actual name. The build was done in a similar but slightly more organized fashion than the Pink Panther. We simply drew the proposed fuselage design on the side of the foam board itself, and then began blowing it up in cutting, gluing, etc. The plane was loosely based on the twin-engine Helio Courier. Daniel designed and finished both sets of motor pods using free-fly Alta motors, which turned out great. The build did require using a neighbor's hacksaw, test flying the wing, and a little dance session, but it was all ready to fly. The maiden flight was great success. Aside from a slightly noticeable asymmetric thrust issue, it flew just as we intended, floaty and slow. Some may wonder what airfoil we used to produce such results. Zach, what kind of airfoil did we use? Just whatever. Just whatever. Yeah, I mean, you that's the best description. You don't need an airfoil for a plane to fly. The yeah. last one had literally a square wing. We also used a brick for a battery and threw it into the massive fuselage full of real estate for a watermelon. If you need proof of how light she is, just check out how easily the wind flipped her over. The initial test flights proved that she was built light enough and with enough thrust to prep her for a watermelon drop, with a small, light watermelon as warm-up. The first drop went great, but my aim was atrocious. Can you tell her never did well in sports? <laughs> oh, impact zone right oh, here. Wow. There's, not, there's like nothing left right it here. It It really did. A tiny piece. Very intact. Yeah, all the way over to here. Right there. That's gross. Can you really believe that Daniel ate that? No, Jesus. Damn. Anyway, let's try something different really quick. Dropping the equivalent of a six-pack of... Mountain Bay. This is the proper use of soda. Yes, it is. Okay, that's, that's six cans. It's still on the tall grass. Now you can release. Oh. I hear see shiny objects. Oh. Hey. oh, the top just got blown right out. <laughs> Holy... <laughs> Look at that! Damn! That's something you gotta some... keep. Back to watermelons. This time, the big one. The takeoff was definitely lethargic. I was careful to ease her into the air with the added payload and to be careful to coordinate my turns and not add too much banking of the overload of the wings. Release time. Ready? There! <laughs> oh, God. Oh! Oh! 
smell actually pretty. Oh, it does smell like watermelon. Wow. Let's try a little bit of it. That is a crater. First. Holy cow. That tastes the, pretty good. The, uh, Let's grab some, some dirt from the mall. Let's grass. grab some dirt from the mall. <laughs> you see the watermelons here because we heard that it, it, that it will kill moles. Yes. Yeah, no, <laughs> just it'll be poison the watermelon, watermelon actually. It's a good mole killer. Now that we patched up the crater and had our share of vaporized watermelon snacks, it was time to draw up one kilo of pure Colombian coke. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> All right, on to more technologically advanced antics. Daniel is a talented guy at turning massive chunks of foam into autonomous drones, so we decided to turn the giant cargo plane into just that. He even used a fancy autopilot, too. We started by calibrating the Ardu pilot by putting it into autotune mode, giving step inputs on each axis, in other words, jamming the stick 20 times in all directions. It also required trying to pick up the beast. Let's just say she wasn't ergonomic. With the autopilot all calibrated, it was time to have it fly a waypoint mission and get some air-to-air -air footage with the Mavic and race quad. Daniel also managed to crash his quad into her. Thankfully, he was able to retrieve it to get the awesome footage back. As another fun waypoint mission, we brought her to our OG RC field and I chased her with my FPV Aeroscout while Daniel got some air-to-air -air footage. Alright, one last challenge before we ultimately crash this bird, lighter tow. Well, it's time to retire the girl. No one wanted her at our field and none of us had the space in our apartments without risking becoming single, so we had one final hurrah with her. Ultimately, we had a blast with the giant watermelon drop bird and learned a lot. Thanks again to Daniel from RC Test Flight for his expertise throughout and for letting us share our experiences with her on our channel. Fast forwarding a few years, Brian took a group of kids in the club to Oshkosh where they saw a C-130 and came up with the idea to build a mudgy inspired four motor cargo plane. Brian, Hyland, and Ian all did an amazing job on this build and poured countless hours of work into her. Everything was entirely designed by scratch, and ultimately, you may notice that she ended up looking a lot more like a C-133 than a C-130 due to the nose length. Once this was brought up, she was given the unofficial nickname of M-133. Mudgy-133, technically, actually Mudgy-76, had a 16-foot long fuselage and a 15-foot wingspan. She was powered by four 70-sized electric motors, each having its own 6S 5000 pack. These motors put out 45 pounds of thrust combined, and if you could believe it, the entire airplane on its own weighed 45 pounds. That meant one-to-one -one power to weight. For comparison, other RC models of the same size class weigh at least twice this amount. This was the Mudgy Way, building it as light as you can. The Mudgy Way definitely came through on its maiden flight. Brian, Ian, and Hyland asked me to perform the first flight, and boy, was it a great flying airplane. She flew even more floaty, slow, and predictably than its builders even expected, and was extremely forgiving. After the Maiden, it was time for the builders to fly her. The weather had cleared up, and I took up my Mavic to chase M133 around. We even dropped some parachutes. Mudgy 133 was yet again proof that this hobby has never-ending possibilities as long as you're open to flying outside the box. Nearly anything is possible. Here's a huge thanks to our friend Brian for the inspiration and mentorship, and a kudos to the amazing work on the build by Brian, Ian, and Hyland. Fast forwarding one last time to almost present day, Ben and Misha finally got the building itch again in 2021, shortly after I moved out of town, and decided to try building another giant stole plane. This time, with the goal of creating an aircraft that flew slower than any of the club's previous projects for its size. We'll keep this one short, because we have a full video on this plane out already, but it's safe to say that they succeeded in their mission. Before Ben moves to New Hampshire, he decided that he wants to build a 75% scale Highlander looking airplane out of foam. You know, one last fun project with the boys. If y'all are interested in watching this, let us know. If you've enjoyed the video, consider hitting the like button, or maybe even hitting subscribe if you want to be notified when we build the massive Highlander. See you next week on Saturday at 9am Pacific with a new upload. Happy landings, and bounce one on for us.